Hello again, and welcome to DaVinci Resolve 12.5. I'm looking at Film Convert in DaVinci Resolve, in this case. I just want to point out at this point, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm not paid to do this. I have nothing to do with them whatsoever. But I do find myself reaching for Film Convert within this software because it works so well. I want to show you how easy it is to grade a clip using only Film Convert, okay? So I'm not going to use any of the standard wheels in Resolve. I'm only going to use Film Convert to grade this log clip to get it looking, well, at least how I would want it to look. So first of all, let's drop this onto the node. And yeah, you can see, you could see there that it is GPU accelerated, as I mentioned. So it's just so quick. I mean, this is only a 1080 sequence, admittedly, but it is using 4K footage. So uh, it's got a bit of work to do behind the scenes and it does it admirably. It has no problem with it whatsoever. The second thing I love about Film Convert in DaVinci Resolve is the layout of the OFX plugin. It's just brilliant. I mean, if you scroll down here, you see that everything is a slider. And I love that. I love the fact that we have moved away from color, the, the color wheels with the kind of dot in the middle that you drag out and stuff. And that, a lot of people like that. A lot of, to, a, to a lot of people, that makes sense and you can sort of see what you're doing. But I personally like a slider that you can find its point very, very specifically. And it's just great to work with. I just prefer that myself. That's a personal thing. Some people may agree with me. Some people may disagree with me. But uh, I love the layout of Film Convert in DaVinci Resolve. And plus, of course, you can drag this out so you've got loads and loads of space to work with those sliders. But I'm going to leave it in a little bit further for now just so I can fit my whole clip in here. All right, first of all, I'm going to get rid of the grain on the clip and I'm going to get rid of the film color on the clip. I want this just to be the clip as was. So obviously now I've taken that off, it, the curve doesn't have any effect and the um, the film stock doesn't have any effect. I'm going to leave this as standard uh, sRGB. I'm not going to apply a particular camera profile to this because I want this just to be a generic kind of tutorial or generic walkthrough that can apply to anyone. You know, you can, of course, put your own camera profile on there if you see uh, that that's necessary. First thing you'll notice here is we have levels, black point, midpoint, and white point. I'm not going to do any adjustments in here. I mean, I could do later on, but I'm not going to do any adjustments in here because these will very specifically deal with a section of your waveform. And I don't want to do that in this case. I want to I want to sort of grade this in the same way as I would do it from the primary cur these um primary wheels here, which happen to be named exactly the same thing, which is very convenient. We have lift, gamma, and gain, and here you can see you have lift, gamma, and gain. So the very first thing I'm going to do is take my lift down to kind of match my black point at zero on my scope here. Now this is referring to this section here on the clip, and I could maybe drop that down a little bit further, but of course then we are losing black detail, and whether that's relevant or not, it depends, doesn't it? I mean, you can see from this clip that we've actually got loads of detail here, and that's nice. Um, did I take the I did take the grain off, didn't I? I think that's just a bit of noise. Let's, t yeah, so let's take our shadow lift just down to just above the zero there. And I'll just zoom out again on here so you can see all the clip. Oh, this is from a shoot that I was doing yesterday. It's a training video which was very interesting. Um, and it was shot out in uh, Western Bird Arboretum, which is a beautiful place if you uh, live in the UK and fancy somewhere, you know, you need somewhere really nice to visit, go and, go and visit Western Bird Arboretum because it's gorgeous. I'm now going to do my highlights so my gain can go right up to the top because I'm going to be looking at this little bit of sky here, I think, as being my, my, my highest point. And as I push that up... You see that starts to completely blow out there, so I'll just back it off a bit. So we keep everything, for the moment anyway, we'll keep everything in. And let's go to our midtones now and drop our gamma down. So shift the whole waveform within itself, kind of downwards, the mids. Drop those down, probably quite a way here, I think. Maybe to, maybe to there. And already, pressing Alt-D, let's do a quick comparison. We've got a pretty nice looking clip with just those three adjustments all within Film Convert. 
it's li lacking a bit of saturation, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is what I always do with saturation, is just whack it up to the top. Bang. Whack it right to the top. Let my eyes adjust to that. I'm not going to use a vector scope for this. Let my eyes adjust to it and kind of think, well, yeah, that looks over the top. I know to me it looks too much, but just let my eyes adjust to it for a second and then back it off. Because if I go to hit, if I, if I start at its original level, then it just, I, I can never gauge it quite right. And that's technically where you should use your scopes, but, uh, but I'm going to use my eyes on a calibrated monitor for this. So yeah, there we go. I've kind of adjusted to that now. So I'm going to now back it off and see what looks reasonable. And I guarantee if you do it this way, you will end up having a slightly more saturated image and a slightly more realistic image, in fact, than you might have otherwise done if you're like me and you kind of tend to undersaturate things rather than oversaturate things. So I'm going to go with, with that much. And I think I probably would have only gone to about there. So, um, yeah, probably round about there. And possibly warm it up just a little bit as well. Right, so... I think you'll agree that even just that is a nice looking image. Gone from that to that, totally within Film Convert. So now let's bring back some of the power of Film Convert itself and bring in some of the film color. Uh, we're not gonna bother with grain for the moment. Let's drop the curve down and bring back the film color. So I'm, no, I'm currently using this, uh, this is a Kodak, I assume. Uh, and so we now got 100% film color on there. I'm going to add the, the curve in that that adds by default as well. So, we, so that's giving us the little bit of extra contrast that I might have wanted down in the blacks here. We might, might bring up those blacks just a, a little bit now as well, just to get those. There we are. The only thing I would probably comment on, in fact, I'm going to change it to the Fuji because I prefer it for this type of footage. Uh, this kind of it's a bit, little bit more of a sort of warmer autumnal look which i think suits the outdoors and suits the trees i don't know that's just what i what i think so i'm just going to drop, drop down my highlights a bit on that but i find that this is maybe a little bit i'd maybe prefer to bring back a little bit more pink into the skin here and i'm going to do that now using the highlights amount and the mid-tones amount I'm too worried not too worried about the shadows i don't want to affect the the kind of jacket too much and things so let's just bring back some the mid-tones amount here and as i bring that back you'll see that that starts to change the color here well it changes the color of the whole image really but we can adjust the angle on that now and that kind of takes it around the wheel so you are going you know you're doing the same thing as if you were using a color wheel but um but you're just doing it with a slider instead so you do it's very visual very easy to just you know, move a slider and look at what you're doing and gauge it that way instead. I prefer that. So I'm going to take it. And it looks okay like that, actually. So that's too much, too pink. Back it off again and go to there. And now just do the same with the highlights. Bring that back a little bit in the highlights. And I'm going to, I want to, I think I do, I think I do want a little bit less gamma on that, actually. Like, that so there we go i'm pretty happy with that i think that looks great we, we've really gone a long way there from that to that what a difference and if we just utilize the um tutorial from the other day if we switch on our versions and then just do versions and original we can see the two side by side in fact we've already got two versions on this clip because i put one on a little bit earlier you see those two side by side. So, you know, that's one possible grade. And of course, the other good thing with, with it is we can now export the LUT. I save this down. It's not the blown one. I'm going to do that, call it that again. Save this. And we've now got that to export out and use in Premiere. We can just put that straight into the Lumetri color panel in Premiere and it will look the same as this. It is wonderful, and it's just to give you an idea of the speed of playback and the rendering time, I'm going to just play this back to you now. Is that all right? It's going to have to be with clearly in some sort of, <laughs> some sort of 
flight path. Flight path, yeah. So. <laughs> I never realised yeah, that about... It's, it's the things you never realise about Western Road too. Sorry. <laughs> that was us um, being concerned about the number of planes that were uh, flying over at the time. Anyway, that just gives you an idea of how well this plugin performs in DaVinci Resolve. That's playing UHD, 25 frames a second ProRes footage into a 1080p timeline, and it's, there's no delay, no lag whatsoever using the GPU accelerated effect. So if you found this useful, it's just this sort of brief overview of how you can grade a clip so easily using just Film Convert. Remember, we haven't touched any of these. Then please do uh, subscribe to the channel or like the video, or whatever you want. And uh, if you've got any questions, just comment below. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.